What up dudes? So I did a video with my thoughts on the Tekken 7 FR trailer. I did a breakdown and I brought up a lot of valuable information I think, but there was some stuff I should have mentioned, so a second video is due. So first of all, I at the end of the previous video you could see that I had the, I did a text overlay where I briefly mentioned the release date for the game. And I want to talk about that a bit. We don't have a release date, but at the end of the trailer, they show that Tekken 7 FR is going to be released in arcades during the summer. So this means June, July, or August. If I have to guess, I'd pick one of those three months, because that's usually what you define as the summer. So with an arcade release uh, during those months, we'll probably let the arcades have the game for like six months, half a year, something like that. That's usually how they do it. So the arcades can make their money. Uh, but yeah, that's really bad news for people who don't have arcades nearby and that means pretty much everyone in Europe. So unfortunately, you're probably going to have to wait until like November or December, I think, to play the game. It could even be in, realistically now, it could be in like February or March of 2017. And that's, that really sucks, my heart goes out to you, but that's just the way it is, you just gotta suck it up, but at least the game looks really good, so it will probably be worth the wait. But it, it is kinda painful to think of the fact that we've just entered February of 2016, and this game could, act, it could actually take another full year for this game to be released. So patience is a virtue, as we all know. And then I want to touch on the amazing cloth effects, the clothes, and how they behave in the wind and during motion in this trailer. There are a lot of coats and capes, which very much take advantage of this neat effect. Note the cloth effect on Brian's balaclava, or Lily's amazingly put together dress, which is affected by the wind. Or uh, Gookie's gi, which just has so much life to it. And I want to touch more on the new outfits. I did it a bit on the previous video, but I want to go into greater detail. Yes, I really enjoy Huorang's new default outfit. A lot of people don't do what I do. It's very edgy and it suits him well. Great detail in the spike necklace, as you can see here on a close-up. And I think the dark hair works uh, on Huorang, even though his red hair is kind of like iconic. I don't know about the eye patch, but it's so crazy different on Huarang that you gotta give give them a, a big thumbs up, and maybe it's a nod to Big Boss himself. Paul is obviously Mad Max inspired. I mean, just look at him co compared to Mel Gibson in The Road Warrior. Yeah, it's there's more of an, a striking resemblance. It's almost a clone outfit, but of course the American flag uh, painted onto it is a very neat touch. And to me, Paul looks better than he ever has. Uh, he looks really great in Tekken 4, his double, his two outfits there, but this one is just, <laughs> it's so over the top and it looks so cool. Uh, I really enjoy it. And Steve's boxing attire is also very much uh, spot on, in my opinion. And Dragunov's default outfit is really cool. It's one of my favorite new ones. Uh, it, it puts his old outfit to shame. I love the gold details on the coat. Devil Jin's new outfit is interesting. You either seem to love it or hate it. Most people seem to hate it. As a base, he has what seems to be a short-sleeved military outfit. Gray and black top with a red lower half. Red pants, that is. Over this, he has a white un uniform piece which breaks off in different sections across his body, held together by a large amount of straps. He has a long chain hanging from his neck which is a neat touch that illustrates even clearer in a symbolic way that Devil Jin is basically Jin's body enslaved by a devil, a point I made in my Jin guide. And I really like the gold collar on these customizations. Very sparkly, shiny and beautiful. And I'm digging the skull paint on Claudio. And I'm wondering if it's universal to all the characters or only for him. It's probably universal. 
Heiachi's rage art has a way more dramatic camera sequence now, and sparks have been added to his charge up. This was very needed and makes it a, so much more dramatic. The effects throughout this trailer are simply breathtaking. From the energy balls amassed by Guki to the letters appearing and vanishing next to him when doing his amazing supers. Other noteworthy effects are the blue greenish hue video filters that, that appear in a very subtle and sometimes not so subtle way uh, and a, in a really cool way when you do a rage attack. Note the environment during these rage attacks. Not only your character goes blue. During Devil Jins, however, the environment turns black and white. It's very cool and very fitting for such a grim character. While in Rage, you can choose to do a Rage Attack or a Rage Art, not both. A very interesting new mechanic which brings new depth to the play. King's Rage Attack lets him bound to the floor or spike to the floor, like in the early Tekken 7 beta, basically giving him two bounds in one combo, first the screw attack and now this, this bound, which gives him a free ground throw attempt. Very devastating stuff. And it seems I misunderstood the Dragon of Rage Art, the new animation we saw in the trailer. People tell me it's a finisher. Rage Arts get a new animation when they are the finishing blow, so it's basically an execution sequence, sequence or a PG-13 fatality. If this is true, it's a welcome addition and I can't wait to see Kazuya's. The new double gen animation shown supports this theory as it's also about to kill, you can tell by the life bars. So I'm not entirely sure as I don't know Japanese, but I'm guessing that's the way it works and it's and it looks really cool. And some dude commented on my first video uh, critiquing me about the point I made where I talked about a fighting game revolution and a landmark among fighting games when um, the Namco team brought in uh, Guki from Street Fighter into their game and he breaks the mold. He pretty much breaks the system. He has his own system. He does a lot of stuff, which is Street Fighter stuff, which the Tekken characters can't do. He has an EX bar, for God's sake. He can do a super. Uh, it just... They have done something that is revolutionary. They have taken two fighting games and they collide within the same game. And you told me that, well, the revolution is already here, like Smash Bros, or I think that was the title. They have Ryu versus Cloud. And I'm like, how is that supposed to be interesting? That Ryu is fighting Cloud. Who gives a shit? We've seen guest characters in millions or <laughs> thousands of games. Uh, you had uh, Kazuya and Heihachi in uh, Street Fighter X Tekken. But like Street Fighter characters, they did chains with normals, they, did, they had supers. That's not very Tekken-esque, that's Street Fighter. They took my characters, the Mishimas, and all the Tekken characters and they turned them into Street Fighter characters. It seems to me like you missed the point. Namco ha ha have taken Guki and they put him into Tekken, but they haven't compromised with, with the Street Fighter system. They have done something which is very brave and they took the time to implement a, a system from a different fighting game and they are now balancing and tweaking it so it works with Tekken without losing the personality and soul of a Street Fighter game. So that to me is the revolution. Not simply having Guki in Tekken and him fighting like a Tekken character. Doing 10 hits, not having his fireballs, not having his EX bar, you know, and not having his... He cancels normals into specials for God's sake. He's the only character who will be able to do that. So please, don't give me more examples of like, well, they have Spider-Man in Marvel vs. Capcom, so you already have this uh, revolution you're talking about. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about two very different fighting games coll system colliding in one game. That is the revolution. Uh, so with that, that's what I wanted to talk about. I hope you've had a nice day, all of you, and I can't wait to see you on my stream. Uh, and I really hope I get to uh, I get to go to Japan in uh, during this summer to uh, test out Tekken 7 Faithful Fated Retribution and record a ton of videos for you guys. 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a shameless plug and tell you guys that I have a donation link. Uh, a link to my donation page uh, below in the description. If you wanna donate and help me out, fucking do it. And I would be so fucking grateful. Uh, take care guys, over and out.